Uh, keep it three minutes max. I'll try to keep it under because we have like about almost 40 people here. I don't know if they're going to show up, but we'll see. Uh, Zach, uh, Jack Zaphos is he here. Jack? Not here. Ron Bremer? Unmute yourself, Ron. Ronald Bremer? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Unmute yourself. Okay. Let me see. You're unmuted. Okay. Draw open the lace curtains. Let in the rays of the sun. Oops. Something happened. Uh, I just lost that poem, so I'll have to read a different one. <laughs> oh, here it is. Draw open the lace curtains. Let in the rays of the sun. Our father used to call them the healing rays of the sun. But now we know better. Those rays did not heal our father's Parkinson's. Those rays did not heal our mother's weak heart. They did not heal the pain caused by betrayals and infamies in the family. They did not heal a gunshot to cousin Joey's head. Push aside the lace curtains to see a hydrangea by the way past the maple tree. It was planted years ago as a tribute to a God we never really knew. Was God indifferent or was it all part of a plan for the greater good? And will we ever know? These days I watch old Westerns on TV I watch cowpokes on trail rides to anywhere. I want to go on a trail ride on a docile horse to places afar and unknown. And when I arrive, will I know it? Or just continue to ride on an endless trail? That's it, thank you. Patricia? Linda, unmute yourself. All right, okay. Thank you. Oh, you want me to read? Yes, you're next. Oh, okay, no, I didn't realize it. We okay. couldn't hear you. Oh, okay. Um, I, I pre-recorded it. Um, so I, I think I'll use that. Well, I'll try reading. It. No, I think I better use the pre-recorded one. Okay, sorry. This was just in Chiron Review. If I can get it. A British astronaut, Tim Peake, at an outer space station is accidentally misstyles a woman asking, is this planet Earth? and it's taken as a hoax. It was in the Telegraph. Calendars begin arriving months before, like subway preachers. He's coming, one yells out on an A train. When? October 25th, the voice answers. He could have said January 1st, as expectations mount for what everyone's been waiting for. Not me, a non-believer. I want an old year. And I want an old new year, one that fell out of the sky like a meteorite, wasn't programmed. The first time gravity didn't hold me down, and I flew on words, on music, in a ballet class. First time undressed, past skin, I flew out of my body in a man's arms, stood up naked before a crowd, not caring what anyone thought. The day my sick cat showed me what being a mother feels like. Each time I flew off the planet, I was raised on a new year. Okay, I don't know if this time I have a short prose poem. If there isn't, it's okay. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. This is prose, I don't know what they call it.
Well, it's not working. Okay. Policing. I dropped my mask, prepared to lift it up over my mouth and nose when necessary, caught by someone passing a safe distance from where I was, in no danger of catching anything from me on this nearly deserted street. I catch her disapproval. The same look I got in a grocery store when telling the saleswoman, plastic is fine. Of course it isn't, because of what it's doing to the environment, our oceans. But, you know, that's not the point. Nor is the point to discourage people from wearing a mask to stem this pandemic. What is, is the silent policing continuously going on among people looking to catch someone at something to show they are one of the good law-abiding ones. Others, trying not to be caught, become overzealous in an attempt to prove it. And we're back in 17th century Salem, prepared to hang another witch. Of course, I'm exaggerating. Of course, I'm not. Thank you very much. Thank you very Bye. much. Okay, a uh, little word to anybody who, I'm getting a lot of messages about people who want to read. Anybody who, are re who, who did register is on my list here. So everybody's on the list. I'll be, I will be calling out your name. So no, no worries. Okay. Okay. Just the next. Thank you, Linda Werner. Thank you. And there's the emotion button down below. You can uh, do the hand, do the, this sign, or do like the waving sign. So there you go. Okay. I'm just going to tell you. Okay. The next readers will be Carrie Magna Radna, Dorothy Cantwell, Jeff Wright, and David Defney. Okay, we have Carrie Magna, uh, Magnus Ragna. She's next. Hi, everybody. Hope you guys are having a good Sunday. I am. I'm with you guys. It's wonderful people. Um, this is from uh, The Alien Buddha's House of Horrors 3, which was recently published. Thanks, Patty. Um, this is 1969-1970. When blooms outside smell like turpentine, where girls played with this greasy gun, and this place used to be such paradise, his words used to hold you spellbound. Soon our beds became so cold, fire pits couldn't disguise the blood running outside the door. It's time to hide away our guns. The sheep are not sleeping tonight. The Southern California sound after dark keep all the hip cats up, stoned out of their gourds. The hopefuls wait outside the troubadour, feeling safe in the brotherhood as singer-songwriters before the threat of the killer's October silence the hopefuls in LA. They wait for the good drugs to take effect, dreaming they were dusty stars before their tender opportunities burned out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Dorothy Cantwell. Hello, thank you. Um, I'm going to read uh, what, a, a poem of mine that was included in this wonderful, wonderful anthology. Thank you, Patricia. And also- Thank you, Dorothy. Uh, the uh, a photograph that accompanies it is so spectacular and beautiful and perfect. So I want to thank you again, Patricia, for everything. Um, I'm going to read one poem, and it is called Whether We Wake from Dreams or Nightmares. As the cloud moves past the moon at midnight, shadows shudder from the corners of the yard and a juga reptans shines like a pool of black blood as it spreads, seeping from beneath the rocks in the garden. A family of raccoons make their way home, invisible between the moon-bleached bones of trees, haunting the woods with rhythmic, ghostly cries, which fade into the terrible darkness. And at the break of dawn, 
The morning mist on the lake rises like a swarm of pale wraiths, gathering and watching, moving toward me as I sit on the dock, gripping my coffee. The world awaits us, whether we wake from our dreams or nightmares. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Next we have Jeff Wright. Are Jeff in the house? No? Okay. We move on to David Defe. Hi, everybody. Hi, Patricia. It's great honor to be here, included as a one of the author in this absolutely historical and beautiful Brownstone Poets Anthology 2020. Thanks again. And I'm going to read my poem, my one of <coughs> the poem uh, which I wrote this couple of months when the pandemic has been started. And it's a beautiful feeling for me to be here with you in this absolutely gifted and powerful company of poets. The bees all around me. I am watching the bees. I feel something eternal. The bees are singing. We can see ourselves and be free. We cannot see ourselves and be happy. We can understand each other and be free and be happy and be alive. And what you see is not what you see. What you hear is not what you hear. Our life, your dream, the most beautiful illusion we can have. You only want to know about second. You only want to feel the second, the second of life. Life has meaning and has no meaning. The second we lose or find the illusion of being eternal. One bee shin down on my palm as a drop of golden blood from heaven. I feel the real touch of love. I see now what is real is eternal. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so you. much, David. Okay, the next people will be reading is Ellen Rittberg, Robert Dickinson, Amira Mitra. Uh, a shout out to my uh, nephew, Callan Curtis and Peter Kozlowski. Uh, Jack, is, Jack Zaffo's not in the house yet, and no Jeff, I guess, okay. Okay, so we go on to Ellen Proba Whitman, uh, Rittenberg. Thank you, Patricia, and thank you for including me in your wonderful anthology and what you do. This is called Early College Days Boston. Why did an unworthy love object have such a hold? A vague longing as if for air, less than love on my part, less than like on his. We did what students did in college dorms. Insects conjoined, if memory serves, my eyes squeezed tight, a stuck door. Me, thin for the first time, him, eyes hollow, almonds, a nascent entrepreneur, he sold bicycles, an exotic in the early 70s when few rode bicycles except along the River Charles. I liked his leanness, his waist, smaller than mine, and may have continued to like him briefly for a time after he told me right after the act, my face resembled a monkey's, but only before the horror subsided. Soon thereafter, I or he or we both departed. Not that his words mattered, I thought. A curio to be filed away in some capsule or antique vault. Decades later, long married and loyal, I'd force myself to remember, although unsure why, I summoned them up of those words or their purport, or even now, unpartnered and scrupulous. The words redound, as words so often do, a teacher of sorts. Thank you, Patricia. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you again for being part of the group. Robert Dickinson, not here. Okay, we'll go to Amira 
Mitra. And then after that, Amira, we're going to have Peter Kozlowski, and then we're going to move on to the next feature. Thank you, Patricia. You want to read after that, Sarah? Okay, Sarah will be, be our, okay. Thank we're you. We're going to get Sarah after we hear from um, Peter Kozlowski. Okay. Ready, Amira. Thank you. It's an honor to be here today and read and listen to this uh, amazing poets and poetry. Um, I'll read the poem In the Room with Charles Bukowski. He nodded at me, the only audience in the room. His head, invisible swollen veins on his forehead, weighing heavier filled with verses that sing, laugh, and clash. He drinking beer, I drinking wine. I broke the ice. How's your beer, Charles? Sad, because of last night's presidential debate. How, how about your wine, poet Petit? Sour because of burnt grapes in California's fire. Do you have your steel up there, Charles? I do, Poet Petit, I do. But no need to use it with God. I sharpened it for the screwed breed down there with you. My advice to you, Poet Petit, is not to save an advice. Sparing it makes it inexistent, no sense. Even when I'm not down there, I deliver my share in a faraway spirit, not to go around and do things in a crazy way, like having a recession, a depression, an electoral de regression, a Pearl Harbor, a Hiroshima twice, then roll down off the top and crash as a lonely dice. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amira. Thank you so much. Okay, Jack Zafros, not in the house. Jeff Wright, not in the house. Robert Dickinson, not in the house. Hello, Callan Curtis. We're gonna move on to Peter Kozlowski. Okay, I'm new. Unmute yourself. Okay, hear me? Yes. Spooky action at a distance, if you know what I mean. Spooky action at a distance, just seeing it on the screen. Just seeing it on the screen, I can practically hear her voice. I know just the way she'd say it. I could just see her now, just seeing it on the screen. Because we both had this conversation before. We never really stopped talking. We know we've been here before. In a way, we still are. We got this kind of entanglement, still close, even when we're afar. And when she starts to scroll the text, I know how that touchpad must feel. Even though they're silent, I can hear the clicks. It seems every bit is real. I feel myself instinctively moving. I start to shift my weight. Because we've got mutually consensual triggers. We both got our cards we can play. It's like spooky action at a distance. You know what I mean? I get poked and I get buttonholed just seeing it on the screen. Well, those state-sponsored actors can't just forbid and repress it. There'll always be a way to express it. Now we're blocked from seeing, but we can still get the feeling of this spooky action at a distance. You know what I mean? 